In today's video, I want to take you through some options on how to customize your Zendesk Help Center template. Uh, to access your Zendesk Help Center or guide as it is known, you will go to your product menu in the top right corner of your screen and select Guide or Help Center. This will bring you to the default Zendesk Help Center template that comes with your standard package. And you will see at the top right of your screen is the Guide Admin menu link. Once you click on that, it takes you into the Zendesk Guide or Zendesk Help Center administration page. Now on the left, you'll see a couple of menu icons. Uh, the first couple of these icons are to do with creating and adding, managing your knowledge base articles and hierarchy. Uh, I'm going to skip over these for today as the purpose of the video is to explain how to customize your Help Center layout. So if you click on this eyeball icon here, which is your customized design icon, you will see under live theme, it shows the Copenhagen theme which is the standard one that comes with your Zendesk package. And this is the theme that we are going to click through and make some changes to customize your layout. Now, before you start, um, this is what I usually suggest to all customers, is instead of working on this live theme, we're going to click on the three dots to the right here and select copy. And what that will do is it will create a copy of the live theme and I'm going to just rename it to Copenhagen copy. There we go. Okay, now that we have a copy that we can work with without making any changes to the live environment, I am going to click on this customize link in the bottom right hand corner. Right, so now there are two ways for you to customize this template. The first is very straightforward and uh, the easiest way to do it. And that is by using these menu icons on the left of the screen. Um, pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, you can go into your colors. You can select the various brand colors that, that fit your website or your, your company brand. So you can change your text color, link colors, hover, visit link. So we can go here and change anything that we want. And then on as we go through these menu icons, you can go and configure your fonts. And then brand is where you can set up your company logo, which is what we see over here, as well as uh, whether we want to see the help center name. You can see that was taken away on the side of this logo, logo here. So there we have the Help Center name coming up and then the favicon, which is the icon that shows up on your browser tab, usually right at the top of the screen, uh, which you won't see in the screen share, but uh, you can update this as well, all from your uh, brand section over here. And then images will be where you replace these banners or background images. An example, we'll just replace this one at the top here quickly. And obviously the size of the images need to be uh, correct and done ahead of time before you start uploading new images to your profile. But this is where you would do that. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to customize your layout over here. And then on the left here are some additional settings uh, that you can work through and you can decide on um, how your help center will interact and what functionality will be shown on your page. So you can see, for example, recent activity that shows all of the KBAs that have been viewed recently. So you can choose whether you want to display that or not. Um, it shows you your article page element. So when articles are displayed, uh, you want to see who the author was. So you're allowing comments, allowing users to follow them. So you can work through all of these settings and configure how that all operates. Okay, and then 
we have the, the options here for your community or your forum section as well. So the first way to do this is to use these options on the left and customize the theme to suit your brand requirements. Now, the second way of customizing your Zendesk theme is by actually going into the code of this template. And you'll see at the bottom right corner, we have the edit code button. And I'm gonna just this car changes. This is a prompt that's coming up because I changed this banner early on. I did not save it. It's now just wanting me to discard those changes. Now, usually the first time that you go into the edit code function, you will be prompted with a warning from Zendesk stating that they are not responsible or required to provide support on your template after you've made any code changes, which I guess makes sense because uh, once you go and edit the code, um, there's not much that the Zendesk support team can assist with. However, with that being said, there are a lot of useful knowledge base articles available uh, that can assist you to make these changes uh, in the code section of the template. So when you look at the code section of the template, you will notice that all of the various pieces of functionality within the template and various pages are broken down into these objects on the left of the page. Right, so, and then I'm gonna start right at the bottom here and just show you that here, for example, is the style.css file. Uh, for those that are familiar with UI design, this is where you can go and amend all of your CSS styling. So this will be your fonts, uh, layouts, and, and such that needs to be done there. So this is where you can go and manipulate that. There is the uh, default script, uh, JavaScript file. So if, if you need to include any JavaScript, there is a file that's provided for that and it already has all the existing JavaScript. Now, obviously a golden rule with making changes to code is do the research and make sure you know where you need to include the snippet of code that you need to include or what you need to change and be very careful not to change existing code that is within uh, the various objects unless you know exactly what you are doing. If all else fails, you can go and revert back to um, make another copy of your live template and start over. Okay, now down on the left here, we see all of the various pages and, and sections. Um, let's go down to, for example, the header section. So this will be the top of your page in your help center. And you will see things like, here yeah, we can see the logo. A lot of these are placeholders that will bring in values from within your Zendesk settings. Um, so you, if you wanted to make changes to that, you can go and change your header file, your food file. If you needed to add some more navigation, you wanted to add some links at the bottom, um, this is where you can go and change that. We've got, for example, the home page. And on the home page, you can go and add your own custom buttons, navigations, um, links, branding, images. So you can really go and change this to have the look and feel of your own corporate website or your own custom design. All right, so that, that in a nutshell is where you can do, make or make those changes. You'll see each of the pages I've opened show up at the top of the page here. All right, so once, once you are done with making your changes, right, then usually what you would do would be to save those changes. And then it will be ready to publish. So if I go back to my themes now, I would have my new theme and when I'm ready to go live, 
I can go and set this as the live theme. Right. So before we go live, we want to just test what this help center looks like. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If you go back into the customize theme, you'll see you've got your theme showing up on the uh, on the side over here. And this is where you can then select what section of the help center you want to preview. And this will give you a preview of the various uh, pages within your help center. And then you also have the option of selecting the role. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the page as an admin, but if I wanted to see what this would look like as an end user, you can see some of the links change and I have an option to submit a request. So I can go back to the home page and there's submit requests. I'm previewing the home page as an end user. Uh, I can have a preview of what it would look like for an anonymous user. In this case, it looks the same just because of the way the permissions are set up for this particular instance. But if you had a restricted help center, for example, that requires signing or login by end users to access the help center, your anonymous would present a login page and the end user would then show you what it would look like once you have signed in. So this is where you will then preview your changes and then once you're happy with the layout, you can then go and publish it as your live template. Well, I hope this quick overview will give you some guidance on how to customize your own help center. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask, and I will uh, assist with uh, as much as I possibly can. I appreciate you watching this video, and I look forward to sharing some more tips and guides on Zendesk in the next video. Thank you.